Rakesh Tahil sir, who is the head of data protection and investigation with Flipkart. It's a case study once again, securing your endpoint data protection and privacy. Rakesh is a retired Lieutenant General of uh, the Indian sorry, Army with 22 Connick. years of experience in information security, IT, telecommunication. My bad, sorry. Okay. And the data program, he's currently with Flipkart as the head of data security and security investigation and was earlier with the PwC India Cyber Security and Data Privacy Practice. Can we welcome Rakesh with big round of applause, please? Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm truly honored to be able to address all of you. I will try and stick to my allotted 20 minutes so that we don't run late uh, from here on. I will be speaking to you on the data security and data privacy aspects related to uh, data and artificial intelligence. So I'm going to cover it in four uh, headings, data security, data privacy, implementing both of these, and finally securing endpoints. Right. Uh, I have a large number of slides, I won't go through all of that. I'd ask the organizers to share the deck because there is a lot of information and this is a very vast topic in itself. Right, uh, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Dharma wheel for data management, right? And data security is an important, important part of uh, data management in itself. And uh, what happens a lot of times is we rush into the implementation portion without establishing the foundations. And data security is one of the foundations for data management, right? Uh, we also have a phase-wise approach which can be implemented. And if you look here, data security is one of the uh, foundational phases. It's part of the phase one. We have a lot of instances we see teams and companies straight away jumping on to the third or the fourth phases, right? And you end up bypassing the important parts where you lay the foundation for a strong data management, data governance structure. And that is what actually enables you to scale rapidly, right? So what are the points related to data privacy that you see, right? Uh, customers and consumers are aware of their rights. There is a huge requirement and push towards securing your customers' data. For example, if you see Apple, uh, from being lax with uh, the privacy of the customers, they are now enforcing privacy for all the apps and Facebook is the biggest, uh, what do you call, the casualty of that, right? You have to put data security and data privacy as part of your applications or of your offerings, whether it's a cloud offering, whether it's on-premise, you have to have it built in, right? Whether you are a B2B, B2C, doesn't matter. Everywhere, security, privacy of your customer's data is paramount. And you are going to keep getting this pushback from a lot of your customers, especially if you're uh, vendors of products, right? For example, in Flipkart, if we have any vendor coming to us, before they clear the security and the privacy concerns, they are not onboarded. There have been instances when companies have not been able to meet these requirements, they have been offboarded, right? I've seen the same thing happening while at PwC with clients. Especially companies based out of Europe and California are extremely strict about privacy. If you do not meet the privacy requirements, you will lose a lot of business. It's as simple as that, right? Regulators are breathing down our necks. India, as of now, does not have a data, data Privacy Act or a legislation, right? We still rely on the IT Act of 2000 with its amendments. Hopefully, we should be getting our own data privacy bill, which will become an act in the near future. There was one which was withdrawn. You can expect one to come in very soon, and you can expect it to be on the lines of GDPR with stringent penalties, with stringent requirements around privacy of your customer's data, right? And whether you are a provider to an enterprise or directly to consumers, you will have to still take care of consumers' privacy. And you will see this in a lot of European MNCs where if you do not meet the GDPR requirements, you are not going to be considered at all for contracts, right? irrespective of what uh, you're providing, whether you are a physical goods provider or a service provider or a software provider. You're out of the game, right? Uh, 
Data privacy in India, like I mentioned, is going to be our data privacy bill. We do not have it yet. The government has withdrawn it. It should be coming in in a better amended form based on all the feedback. Now, what remains to be seen is will the focus of the bill be on protecting customers' data or will it be on security aspects which the government considers important? Right? Hopefully, it should be a balance of both. The last one is more focused on security rather than data privacy of the customers per se. The actual uh, uh, contours of the bill, we have to wait and see once it comes out. Right, I'm just going to talk of an approach to actually implementing this. Uh, this portion is something which a full team of security professionals works on to actually implement. Right, I'm going to try and cover something which will take me about two hours and 10 minutes. So I'm going to skip a lot of stuff. I'll share this on my LinkedIn so you can pick up the deck from there. Right. All right, so what we say, right, as a security professional, when we interact with our, uh, our data science team, or when we interact with our AI teams, or the teams building out uh, products in the blockchain, right, we keep telling them the same thing, that you need to implement security by design. You need to implement privacy by design. These should not come in as afterthoughts, right? Where after the whole SDLC cycle is over, you are then coming and approaching security to now assess that product or that tool which you have built. It should be inbuilt right from the start. All right, and it is, uh, can you go to that deck? Yeah. So if you see, it is right from setting up your requirements to design, development, testing, right, deployment. The whole stages should involve security and privacy as part of what you are developing. It should not come in that when it is assessed, that you are now going and looking at security, right? It leads to time delays, it leads to cost delays, and if you follow an agile process of development, it's not going to work out. You have to have uh, security built in, right? And uh, uh, what we have which can actually uh, implement this uh, approach is DevSecOps, right? Instead of DevOps, you have DevSecOps, where security is constantly there through the entire life cycle. And if you are able to actually deploy this model, it's not easy, right? You'll find people talking of it as if it is just, you start off tomorrow. It takes time, it takes planning, it needs management buy-in, reworking your processes, retooling some of your uh, uh, systems that you use. If you can implement DevSecOps, uh, I can assure you, once it is mature, you will have privacy, you will have security being built in by default. And this is the goal which you plan to reach. Right, this is not your start point, this is your end point. The start point is those points which I mentioned earlier. Can you go back? Uh, a slide before. One minute. Yeah. So this is what you have to actually plan to do. Right? You need to build security into your entire process. Your architects need to be trained on security. Your developers need to be trained on the coding security. You don't want to keep re redoing the same code. Right? And it is not easy, all right, because a developer's focus is on getting the best product in the quickest time. Security slows on that process. It is a fact, right? Nobody likes to admit it, but if you try and build in security, it will slow things at the initial stages. But as they go on, it will speed up again, right? Not an easy thing to do. It's an essential requirement, all right? And when you talk of privacy by design, if you see the entire focus, is on the consumer's data, right? Not on the business requirement alone, right? You don't want to be going and fixing things because a regulator has now come and pointed out. GDPR has huge fines, right? 2% of your profits globally. Up to that, the regulator can fine you. You have European customers, whether you're based out of Europe or not, you have to adhere to GDPR. Similarly, in the case, is the case in California. If you have Californian customers, you have to adhere to CCPA. Right, US, each state has their own regulations. US doesn't have a nationwide regulation. So what do you do? For example, one option which many companies follow, you offboard customers from Europe if they are not a major proportion of your uh, user base, right? Because maybe the cost of implementing GDPR requirements does not match up to losing those customers. And that is something which many companies have actually done, right? They block users from Europe from accessing the applications. Now, 
uh, there are a lot of framework standards that you can implement to actually attain cybersecurity requirements as also your privacy requirements, right? I'm also gonna talk of cloud security because that is the future. All applications are moving to the cloud, right? Uh, something as simple as MS Office, which we have been used to for decades using on our desktops, is moving to the cloud, right? It's moving onto your mobiles. And cloud security is going to be a paramount importance in future. So if I talk of cybersecurity, right, uh, you will hear me talking a lot, lot about the NIST frameworks, and I'll explain why uh, a little later. Right? So one of the, uh, I would say the most beautiful uh, cybersecurity framework for companies to implement, and that is whether you're a startup to a mature enterprise, is I would say the NIST cybersecurity framework. That is because it plugs in into other frameworks, other standards, right? You can implement that uh, framework using multiple control frameworks. It doesn't say you have to do only ABC. It says you can do ABC, you can do XYZ, your choice. You can mix and match, you can pick and choose, right? If you explore that, uh, you'll realize that it is very user friendly. It is designed for mom and pop shops right up to enterprises, right? You, I, I'm aware of companies which are 100 plus years old still using this framework, it meets their requirements also. All right, do explore this, you will realize it is uh, extremely versatile, extremely useful. The risk management portion goes hand in hand with privacy and security, right? If you do not have a risk management process or a risk management setup, you are not going to be able to actually implement cybersecurity, privacy, and compliance, right? Risk management is the foundation. I'm not gonna talk about risk management, but do be aware of that. Uh, essential part of security, privacy, and compliance is risk management, right? Uh, now the difference between framework standards, I'm sure all of you are aware. Uh, I'll just elaborate for those who are not. Uh, the standards which are there, the ISO, IEC standards, you can be certified against, right? To the frameworks, you can only say, I adhere to those frameworks, or I am attested for those frameworks. Standards, you can actually go and say I'm certified, right? I as a company, I'm certified. You'll see ISO 9001, 27001, right? So 27001 is the cybersecurity or the information security management system is implemented, right? So this is something which is uh, some, in, you can say a gold standard for security, right? And again, uh, similar to NIST, it's got a large number of different uh, standards, different uh, documentation, control systems, which you can actually go and implement, right? It's got risk management, it's got cloud security, privacy management, uh, information security, right? Uh, I have given the details in these slides, but I will not go there right now, because it will get too detailed and it is uh, in itself a major topic, right? It comes under the governance, com risk compliance portion of cybersecurity. All right, so I will again, as I mentioned, share this deck on LinkedIn or I'll ask the organizers to share it. And please go through those when you do after the time. Now, moving on to the privacy frameworks, you have the regulations which are primarily what you have to adhere to, right? The regulations do not tell you how to do things. They tell you what is required in dense legal language. You then have to translate that into practical controls uh, which you can implement in the business, technology, or security side, right? But these are some of the uh, regulations which are there, which you need to ad adhere to, right? India, as mentioned, uh, currently is the IT Act. Hopefully, we will have our own Data Privacy Act and Bill soon, right? You also have frameworks and uh, standards to attain these privacy requirements, right? NIST has got its own privacy framework which plugs into your uh, NIST cybersecurity framework and the NIST controls, which I will cover subsequently. You also have uh, standards which you can be certified to. 27701 is the privacy information management standard. You can be certified for that, right? The requirement for that is first you have to be certified for 27001. After that, you can be certified for privacy information management, right? So currently this is the only standard to which you can be certified for privacy. And a lot of companies actually use uh, 27701 to uh, show compliance with GDPR. It is not necessary to show compliance with GDPR. GDPR does not specify 
how you show compliance. Uh, this is a way which you can actually certify that you are compliant. Or a, a second option, you're going for a third party assessment and the third party says that these guys do meet the requirements. Last option, self-assessment, right? It uh, depends on what your customers or your clients take it, whether they're willing to accept the self-assessment or not. Now, uh, cloud security is not per se part of this talk, right? But uh, all of you uh, professions are in the field of data science, artificial intelligence. You are going to be moving a lot of your products to cloud. You will sell a lot of your products as SaaS solutions or maybe PaaS solutions, right? And that is going to be delivered over the cloud. And cloud security is what we see as a weakest point right now for companies, especially after COVID, everyone rushed to put things on cloud. They have not taken care of the security aspect. And the cloud security uh, aspect that we see most, right, is misconfiguration. Your folks do not know how to configure the solutions on the cloud. The, you leave VMs open. You leave uh, your access is not locked down. Encryption is not implemented. Basic foundational things uh, is where we see things going wrong in the cloud security process. Cloud security, again, one of the best uh, methods to go about it is the Cloud Security Alliance's uh, cloud control matrix. Right? It covers about 16 odd families and uh, or domains. And it tells you what controls are required where. It gives you a ready-made template you pick up, put it in your organization, see where you are, see where you need to be. It helps you implement cloud security, right? You also have a NIST cloud computing standards, which is uh, where the whole concept of your shared secure uh, responsibilities, your uh, model has come up from where your, uh, the, uh, in your, your PaaS, IAS, SaaS, all of those, uh, definitions have come from. Uh, important document to understand. You also have to go and if you want uh, to actually be, if you're part of the, let's say the ISO 27001 family, you also have uh, standards which you can implement controls, right, for uh, cloud services as also PII on cloud. I'm sure a lot of us uh, have our customers public uh, personally identifiable information on our clouds, right? So this standard is uh, aimed towards public clouds, but it can also be implemented in your own cloud environments. Uh, I'm sorry if I've been going too fast. I know I can see a lot of days phases out here, uh, but like I said, this is a topic which is very vast and very deep. And uh, I normally cover this topic in about two hours. I've had to crunch it down to 20 minutes. So you will have to apologize me for the speed at which I'm going. Uh, I'm also trying to give a few minutes to answer questions uh, which the audience may have. Now, the actual implementation part, this is where things actually get interesting and where a lot of things go wrong, right? You have a lot of control references which you can actually pick up and use. NIST itself has its own uh, its privacy and security controls. It's a document called as 853. It gives you what controls are to be implemented for which requirement, and it also tells you how to implement those particular controls, right? A dense document, but very useful. Most of us use it just to pick and choose what we require when we require, right? It's, it's something which is a useful document. You also have a document called as ISO 27002, uh, which gives you the controls to be implemented to attain certification for ISO 27001. Right? It gives you uh, the controls which are actually required. Uh, and it has recently been revised. It is now up to date this year. Uh, and it is something which you can consider implementing. You also have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the cloud controls matrix. You have the COVID framework, the POSO framework, right? ITIL is there, SIS cybersecurity controls. Uh, if you're in the health uh, domain, you have the high trust cybersecurity framework. If you're a payment uh, processor, you have the PCI DSS. There's a plethora of options for you. You have to pick and choose what suits your requirement, right? There's no one size fits all in security. Like uh, our previous speaker mentioned, there's no one size fits all in data. Same is the case for security. And the uh, model which you implement will keep changing as you keep growing, right? I think I'm out of time, so I'll just skip those two slides. I would request all. If you can actually go and read those two slides, 
Uh, can you just give me a minute to go into those? Right, so this is actually uh, how you have to go and implement your data security controls, right? The whole aim is risk reduction for you as a business. And it starts from your architecture design. You have to identify, you locate, identify, and classify all the information that you hold, right? Whether it is uh, regulatory information, customer information, sensitive information, all right? Uh, you have to implement information rights management. Data security, if you see, is just one part of this whole uh, gamut, right? Uh, system security, right from your facility down to your endpoints, whether it's a mobile or a laptop, right? If you have customers' PII, PHI, PCI data, you have to obfuscate or mask the data. It could be in flight, it could be permanent. That's up to you. Encryption, again, right? All of us think of encryption only at the time of storage, but encryption has to be implemented while the data is in use, while the data is in transit, right? Uh, data integrity, extremely important for uh, the pro audience over here. If your data integrity is lost, uh, I mean, things go quite bad. You have to have backup, retention, archival, change management, right? Uh, vulnerability management patching, extremely important. If your systems are not patched, you're leaving yourself open for attacks, right? You've got to carry out uh, AppSec for your DevSecOps, your tools, vulnerability assessment, penetration testing. So if you see it's a whole uh, environment in itself, insider threats are your biggest risk. You, that is why I've highlighted it separately, right? And you then have to monitor your whole environment. You have to, there will be data breaches. It's a guaranteed fact, matter of time. You will have a breach. How do you handle those? And how do you investigate those, right? So uh, I've tried to cover as much as I could in high, uh, high level detail. Right, uh, and you can always contact me or uh, go through the deck. Any questions? I think can I have two minutes for one, question? Yeah, I will take one quick question first. Hi, thanks for your talk. Uh, my question is with regards to privacy and security. So, a lot of people are talking about Web three, especially Google and Meta have espoused it. So, what is your opinion, especially in uh, digital commerce, which is your area? Uh, the, the opportunity for Web3 as well as federated machine learning because I come from a data science background. So machine learning is the future of security, both machine learning for security and security for machine learning, right? Uh, the amount of like you incidences or events which come, uh, uh, if you have a mature organization comes in the millions, right? It's not possible for humans to actually go and look at it. Machine learning is the future and I didn't actually cover the secure it's uh, the endpoint security. One of the tools which is there is something called the UEBA, which is a user and entity uh, uh, behavioral analytics, right? It is a pure uh, ML tool, right? It's an analytics tool. It takes in huge volumes of data and uh, actually goes, uh, gives you a risk score for the individuals, right? So just give me a minute, I'll just show you that. There are two tools which uh, your, Security information and event management uses machine learning. Your security orchestration, uh, the SO tool, that also uses uh, machine learning. And the last one, the user and entity behavior analytics. All of these use machine learning. This is the future. Now coming to blockchain or Web3, right? I would not go into Web3 as, as it. Use cases are still developing. Blockchain is an extremely use, uh, useful tool for security. Like I mentioned, millions of incidences. How do you maintain them in an integrated manner? Blockchain is again a uh, use case over there, right? Still developing, uh, machine learning is there, machine learning is developing, security for machine learning is required, and blockchain is again another important component of security. And in fact, I've told my teams, if you do not know uh, ABCD technologies, AIML, blockchain, cloud, right, and data science, if you do not know one of these and at least two of these, you're going to be irrelevant in two years in security, right, in addition to security itself. Thank you, Thank sir. You.